So what are the rich doing with their cash? How about Gen Z and getting a job? Also, what is going on with owner's equity? That and more. But first, folks, I am actually recording this Monday evening because, frankly, I have an early flight Tuesday morning and I don't think I'm going to have time to do the daily financial news live. Hopefully you appreciate the fact that we did this in the evening so you have something to think about. So let's get into, what do we want to get into first? Let's get into what the rich are doing with their cash. So there was a uh, survey done and the question was for high or for rich individuals, how much cash are they keeping? So we're gonna give you two different numbers. We are going to give you one at 3 million and one at 30 million. Again, folks, somebody who has $3 million in liquid investable capital, how much of that are they keeping in cash? The answer, $450,000. Think about that, folks. That's roughly 15%. So think about it. You have a $3 million stock portfolio or savings, bonds, CDs, whatever it happens to be. If you are one of those individuals, there's a very good chance that you are sitting on roughly $450,000. Why might they do that? Well, they might be ready for you know big emergencies, surprise expenses, also maybe some liquid capital for investments. I actually thought more interesting was the ultra rich. Now these folks in this case have a $30 million net worth, three zero, not three, 10X three, $30 million, and they are sitting on 20% or $6 million in cash, cash equivalents. Can you imagine? I can't even imagine $6 million in liquid or semi-liquid cash, savings, money markets, CDs probably. Yeah. Why might somebody worth 30 million bucks keep 6 million cash? Why would they do that? My guess, they're looking for potential investments. Right? I think they're keeping the dry powder available because they see investments coming. I couldn't imagine $6 million in emergency funds. That would be a little ludicrous. But yes, folks, the rich have 15 to 20% of their net worth in cash, according to this survey by Bankrate. Bankrate survey. How about the LA Lakers? Folks, I don't know if you're a basketball fan, but I am. The LA Lakers had been courting the coach from... Uh, the national championship or uh, UConn basketball team, Dan Hurley. And Dan Hurley said no to $70 million six-year contract. I don't know. What is that like? 11 and a half million bucks a year. Could you say no to 10 million bucks a year to coach the LA Lakers? Yep. Dan Hurley did. How about a uh, rocket mortgage survey? What are people saying about investing? What is the safest investment? Now, according to this Rocket Mortgage Survey, they did lower income, mid, and high income or upper class. They did it across various metrics. I chose four of them. Real estate, stocks, gold, and cash. I think it's very interesting when you see the numbers. Let's go to savings. Let's go to cash. The lowest income had the highest uh, trust in savings at 20%. Middle income, 15, and the rich, five. Let's go to gold. Again, the lower income folks had the most trust in gold. 24% for lower income, 19% for mid, and only 14 for the rich. I think that's interesting. Cash and gold are seen as most reliable by the lower income, aka the poor. What about stocks? Now we get a flip. The lowest income sees uh, the safety of stocks at 14%, mid 20, and the rich 32%. And again, I said uh, it's trust. I forget what I said earlier, but what do they trust? Again, stocks 14, 20, and 32. And finally, real estate. Real estate was pretty interesting. It was the highest score for all brackets. 
It was higher than stocks, higher than gold, higher than savings for all brackets. Real estate, the lower income, 33% trust real estate. The middle, 36 and the upper 40%. So again, the upper class sees the most value or most trust in stocks in real estate. The poor sees the most value in gold and savings. And the mid is stocks and real estate. So pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, how about Indeed Job Posting Index? Again, we're getting a lot of job data. I didn't, I haven't read about their survey before, but Indeed has a job posting index. It is actually up 12.1% since 2019. So we are above pre-pandemic. However, we are down 13.4% year on year. So what does this mean? I think it clearly means the job market is recalibrating. We are getting bet more into balance. It is getting better. The Fed is winning. A lot of you in our school community, folks, I'm really excited about the school community. A lot of you are asking for some hands-on self-management, and that is something that I can't help you with. I do not self-manage, but I have some amazing friends in the network. Uh, I have reached out to Matt, the Lumberjack Landlord, Dion, uh, the Lazy Landlord, and even Millennial Mike to talk about how they handle management. I've already got confirmation from both Matt, the Lumberjack Landlord, and Dion uh, that in the next two weeks, each of them will be hosting a Zoom call in the early afternoon or evening uh, so that you can ask questions about self-management. I know a lot of you have those questions. I see it in the group. So good news. The Lumberjack and Dion have stepped up and they will be there to answer your question. Folks, if you haven't joined school community, what the heck are you waiting for? It is the place to be. It is a place to network. It is a place to ask questions. Uh, we are talking about deals. People are talking about their situation, asking questions. It is the place to be. Join now. We just did a call with Greg Dickerson yesterday. It's posted. Did a call with Simon. It's posted. There's a lot of great details in there, including a 10-week boot camp six-hour masterclass on creative finance. And most importantly, probably if you have kids, folks, if you have kids, say 10 to 17, there is a three-day challenge that Bill Allen po po posted that gave us. You should watch that. You should watch that with your kids. See if your kids can learn some things about money this summer. If you have a 10 to 17-year-old, let me know if you're going to do it. Uh, maybe I'll... Uh, Maybe I, you know what? If you have kids 10 to 17, let's do this. If you are in the school community, I will put up a $100 bounty for wh who, which kid makes the most money this summer. I will simply trust you, the parent, to keep a scorecard. So take the three-hour challenge from Bill Allen. Go do it. Help them. And if you make the most money, I will give you a $100 bonus cash uh, so that your kid get a little little celebration by my trophy or something. There you go. I uh, got some updates on owner's equity. I actually got two numbers for you, pretty wild. As you know, folks, roughly 60% of homes have mortgages, which means 40% are mortgage-free. So I have two numbers for you. Homeowners with mortgages, so this is the 60%, have $17 trillion in home equity according to core logic. Uh, that is the average, I can't even fathom this. I can't fathom this. The average equity per home, 305 grand. That doesn't make sense to me. But that is what core logic said. That's what I wrote down. Uh, now, if you look at total owner's equity, that's the 60% plus the 40 free and clear. Now we're looking at $34 trillion dollars in owner's equity. Pretty amazing. Now, lastly, folks, let's talk about something I saw on intelligent.com. Intelligent, do I got that right? Yep. Intelligent.com survey. Intelligent.com survey interviewed companies that were interviewing Gen Z. And these companies had some very interesting things to say about Gen Z. And simply, I want to ask, is social media to blame? Is social media to blame for these scary statistics? According to intelligent.com survey, 
53% of Gen Z interviews did not make eye contact, or I should say had trouble making eye contact. Number two, asked for unrealistic compensation. 50%, half asked for unreasonable compensation. Three, dressed inappropriately. Folks, it's an interview and you are going dressed inappropriately. And this one, I can't believe this one. This has to be some bad data. It has to maybe be me not understanding the survey. But again, you can watch it. This has been on Twitter. It's been on Instagram. Intelligent.com survey. 19%. That's one in five had a parent, brought a parent to the interview. Can you fathom bringing your mom or dad to a job interview? There has to be something wrong with this survey. Maybe I don't understand what they mean by 19. I mean, that is not even fathomable bringing your mom or dad to an interview. I can't fathom that. So at the end of the day, folks, that is the daily financial news. We need to buckle up. It's Tuesday morning. <coughs> Tomorrow, it will be Wednesday morning, which we will have CPI. Later Wednesday, we will get the Fed. We will get the dot plot. With the dot plot, we got big questions. How many cuts in 2024? What is the unemployment rate by the end of the year? What is inflation? And finally, what is GDP in the second half? Do they see a recession, folks? Buckle up. Wednesday is going to be a big day. Folks, hope you have an amazing day. Take care. Like, subscribe, comment. Please join school. Later.